All right, good evening, everybody. So tonight, I wanna to see if I can use a Mac to update the firmware on one of my EG4 6500 inverters. So a few weeks ago, I was browsing the forums and someone was looking for an inverter that did not require a Windows computer to update the firmware. And obviously, you know, the Victrons were thrown out there and, and somebody suggested, you know, dual booting your, your Mac so that you could have Windows and Mac loaded on the same machine. But then somebody suggested, well, why not use a virtual machine? And I originally thought, well, that might work, but I didn't think that the the COM port connection was gonna be able to navigate successfully from the Mac device to the Windows virtual machine. And someone suggested, well, try VirtualBox. And I've used VirtualBox in the past. And so I thought, well, let's, let's try this. I wanna see if it's actually gonna work. So that's what we're gonna do. We're going to download VirtualBox. We are going to install a Windows virtual machine. And then we are going to plug in the USB to serial cable and see if the COM port first shows up in the VM. And then if it does, then I'm gonna reflash one of these inverters with the latest software of the 6500s, which is uh, what, 7963. So let's jump on over to the computer and start the download process before we start working on some of the hardware stuff that we need to worry about. All right, so we are over here on my Mac Mini. And yes, uh, for those of you wondering, this is the Mac Mini that was having the flickering issues. Let's see here, about, this is the Intel-based Mac Mini. This is not an M1. So I'm not exactly sure how it's gonna work with an M1 Mac. So if you have one, uh, I, I'd love for you to try it and let me know what your, your results are. But you can see uh, 3 gigahertz, 6 core i5, 64 gigs of RAM, and I am currently running Ventura 13.2.1. So we're going to come to virtualbox.org, go to the downloads page, and we are going to download for a Mac OS on Intel. And let's see here, it actually looks like they do have a developer preview for uh, the M1 and M2 Max, which is nice. So let's download this. That didn't take long at all to download. Double click to install. And we'll go through the basic installation steps. And the installation went fairly smoothly. So move everything to the trash. Now, we also need to download a Windows VM. Now, I'm not gonna get into uh, all the licensing that you should do for a uh, Windows operating system. Uh, you need to handle all the licensing on your own to make sure that you are using the software properly. But for me, I am going to just go to uh, my browser and just type in Windows 10 ISO. And I'm gonna download it straight from Microsoft. Windows 10, confirm. And find my language. And I wanna do a 64-bit download. Five point seven gigs, so we will fast forward through this. All right, so our ISO is all downloaded, so we're gonna open virtual box. Drag it over here. So okay, so you can see the virtual box manager. We are going to uh, create a new virtual machine. So Windows 10, 
That's fine for my default location. We need to select an ISO. And you can see it pre-selects Windows 10 Home, which really, I mean, 10 Home should be fine for what I'm trying to test. So VirtualBox user, passwords change me. I'm just gonna leave it for now. And we are going to leave, ah uh, yes, it does not like the space in the host name. So get rid of the space, Windows 10, and hit next. We'll just leave two gigs of RAM, that's fine. And one CPU. And for a hard disk, I don't really want anything super large. So we will just do 20 gigs and finish. And what this is going to do is it's actually going to go through and run through the installation process of Windows 10 into the virtual machine. So we'll let this do its thing and we'll come back when it's all finished. So while Windows is being installed, I wanted to come over here and prep this display to be able to take it into the office next to the Mac Mini. So for those of you that might not know, these displays are detachable and then you can connect the Cat5, Cat6 extension cable from the inverter and mount your display wherever you need to. So I know one guy has got his inverters mounted in his barn and he's got a conduit run to his house and he's got his displays in his house. Uh, these would work great for, you know, in your RVs, whatever, but they allow you real flexibility to have the displays of the unit wherever you want them so that you're not having to come down and check the units themselves. For me, I just use solar resistant, so I don't care where the display is. But for this uh, test, I need to be able to have the display close to my computer so that I can plug in the USB to serial connection. So what we'll do, this is my solar resistant cable. I'm just going to disconnect that right now. Glad solar system doesn't complain, it's not audibly. And then if you look underneath here, right over on this side is the screw to remove the display. And again, it's one of them tiny, annoying black screws. So don't strip it and don't lose it. And you kind of need two hands to do this. All right, so here's the screw. There's the bracket that holds the display on. The display is just gonna slide down. And then you see over here on the right, there is the network cable that goes to the display for when it's mounted in the case. So we're just gonna disconnect that. Slide this down. Here's a good tip. When you do this, when you disconnect the display, it disconnects the battery connection. I still have the grid AC in connection, so it actually switched over the inverters. I heard them click, and you probably did too. Uh, they, it switched over to grid power as opposed to battery power. I would assume once I connect this all back together, yeah, it'll be fine. But be aware, you may need to turn your power off before you disconnect that display. Your remote display, your remote cable, your extension cable is gonna plug in right here. So your display normally plugs in right here. You wanna plug in an extension cable here for however long you need it to be. I made up, uh, I don't know, 20 foot long cable. So we'll plug one end into here and we'll walk over into the office. 
here on the floor is my other extension cable. And so we've got our display connection right there. We're just gonna plug in. And now our display boots up. Mac Mini is right there. There's our display. So we need to plug in the USB to serial cable into the Mac so that it registers. And then we need to pass that connection from the Mac into VirtualBox. Let's try this here. Let's see if it works. Because I really don't have a whole lot of USB connections. All right, so looking at the Mac here, we see this this USB icon flashing. And if I click on that, if I left click on it, we can see all the different US, excuse me, USB devices plugged in. And we want to pass this prolific technology USB serial controller into Windows. So I'm going to click on that. And now you can see we have a USB serial controller showing up inside the Mac excuse me, inside the Windows device, and you see this, this light flashing back and forth. It means it's sending data to the virtual machine. And now it says it's set up and ready to go. We're gonna verify that by right-clicking and going to Device Manager in Windows. And looking at ports, and there we go. COM3, prolific USB to serial. I don't like using Edge, but it's right there. Let's see, can we make this a little bigger? Yeah, we can, but it's all a resolution thing. And I really don't want to mess with it right now because I don't need to. Go to downloads, and we're looking at the EG4 6500. Stationary download. And let's extract everything. And so I have disconnected my AC output on my inverters. Looking over at the display, you can see the light is on here on this adapter. I want to try and get this all in frame here. So I'm going to take the cable that's coming from the um, USB to serial adapter. And you can see right here, Mac Mini over to this hub serial adapter to this RJ45, which came with the inverter. And I'm gonna plug that in to the computer port and click it in. And then I have my display set to turn off. So I need to press a button to make it wake up. So we're gonna run the remote panel flash tool and again, like normal, we get the warning. Run anyways. It's pre-selected COM3. And all we need to do is hit Update MCU. The display turned off. Let's see if it makes a connection. Again, Windows 10. Running off my Mac Mini. In VirtualBox. There we go. COM3 was opened. And we're starting to write. We'll fast forward through all this because we've, we know what a firmware update looks like. If you haven't, I'll have a link right here to my full walkthrough of, of installing the firmware. This is just a proof of concept of making sure that it actually runs and actually does work using the Mac. Reflash complete. And you can see the display counting down. So just for good measure, to make sure that everything works, we're gonna run the other reflash as well. Did they update to another new firmware that I didn't know about? 7966. Interesting, we'll have to look at that. Again, we get standard warning, run anyways. We were on COM3. We need to select our file, 7966, which is the same over here. 
open and update. Now you see the lights blinking all over the place. Again, I should have clicked the button to make the screen be lit, but I didn't. And we're writing. 99%, 100%. Programming successful. Now we just need to wait for the display to finish. Looks like it's all done. 2P2 and bypass. See if I can squeeze my hand in here. Seventy nine six six sixty one twelve. So that is a new firmware. Seventy nine six three was the last one that I knew of, but there's no change log in here. So I need to figure out what was changed in seventy nine six six. Before I wrap everything up, I do want to uh, give a shout out to Solar Guppy uh, on the forum. He's the one that that made the comment about VirtualBox. So I figured I would give it a whirl and then show you that yeah you can use a mac at least an intel based mac to update your firmware well that was kind of nice to find out because now i really don't have to dredge up the laptop and wait for it you know 20 minutes to turn on to be able to update the firmware all i got to do is pull out my my cat 5 cable and run it into my office and plug directly into my mac mini so awesome now on the plus side this should work for the mpps the orient powers the sun gold power inverters and basically any other uh sister to the eg4 6500s uh, using all the same components it should all still work the same for all of those different models i do need to remind you that my Mac Mini is an Intel-based Mac Mini. Uh, it does not have the M1 chip in it. So, if any of you have an M1 chip in a Mac and would like to run this test, you know, reach out to me in the comments. I'd be very curious to see if, if you can get the exact same results and see that everything works. And along the same lines, uh, if any of you have a Linux-based machine, um, I could fire one up, but I, I kind of don't want to have a VM within a VM to run this test. I would love to be able to just have a straight Linux-based machine that someone's got a uh, flavor of Linux loaded onto it. Load VirtualBox, because I'm pretty sure VirtualBox runs on Linux as well, and run through the same thing. If we can figure that out, that'd be awesome. Because then we don't have this arbitrary limitation anymore of, you gotta have the Windows machine in order to update the firmware. So with that, I'm gonna let y'all go. Uh, y'all stay safe, stay warm. Oh, which I forgot. You like my new sign? Uh, I'll include a link in the description below, uh, just in case you wanna add that to your environment. Uh, it's kind of fun, my son came home and saw it and, and he started laughing. But uh, all right, so again, y'all stay safe, stay warm, and we'll catch up with you later.